All right, here we go. Welcome back to Golf Subpar with Colt Nost and Drew Stoltz. The Farmers Insurance Open is complete, and once again, Torrey Pines did not disappoint Sleaze. An awesome finish for Matt Pavone of France. Matty. Got his first PGA Tour win in just his third start. An incredible shot on the 72nd hole from the left-hand rough. I tell you what, I had a flight to catch. I finished up with Xander Shoffley, about four groups ahead of that. I was slowly working my way back to the TV compound. Didn't want to go too far just in case there was a playoff. When he laid it up in the rough and Nikolai Hoygaard knocked on the green, I'm like, oh boy, we got a problem. Here we go. We're going again. Saddle up. I don't know what it is about Tori. I know this wasn't the leaderboard that a lot of people hoped it would be with some of the names that were in the field down the stretch. But for whatever reason, you go back to Tiger's U.S. Open, John Rahm's U.S. Open, Damn near every year at the Farmers, like it always comes down to that last hole. The last hole spectacular. And even going back, we were talking about on radio today. Even when the one time I can think of in the past where there was like a big lead going eighteen, Kyle Stanley, then that thing ended up not being so, so such a layup. But it just it yields such a good finish every single year. And then this year, I don't think Matty Pavone was a guy that many people had circled as winning that thing going in. I had thought my long shot Nikolai Hoygaard was looking pretty damn good, good after knocking it on the green. And two there, but uh, damn, hats off to him. First Frenchman since 1907 to win on the PGA Tour. Tell me all well about done. it. Well done. They had a member like it was yesterday. Won the Open Championship, which wasn't a PGA Tour event then, but now it is. So all you people that say it's ridiculous that you consider that, whatever. Don't care. He won the Open Championship. But congratulations. You're right, Tim. I thought when he laid it in the rough and Nikolai knocks it on the green, I was like, Nikolai's about to win this thing outright. Like He's going to two-putt for birdie. Vaughn's going to have a tough time making par from that. I was out there. The rough was no joke. I mean, several times throughout the week, it took myself, all the caddies players, and some of the gallery members around to help find people's balls. Yeah. Matt, was it Maverick McNeely? Yeah. Like the whole, I mean, they knew they're like, the ball is within five yards of where we are, and like no one could find it. It was damn near a lost ball. That thing was nasty. When he laid it up, not only in left rough, but that far back, what do you have? 155. 155. I was like, dude. It's a good shot to get this just on the surface anywhere. I did not think the left bowl was in play, but I was kind of thinking the same thing. I was like, Nikolai might win this thing with two putts. I was actually hosting the TCU golf team at the time at the Rocks. We were watching this thing on our phone. The dude I was playing with, Gustav, the goose man, uh, like grew up with Nikolai and all this stuff. So we were watching shot by shot, all the things. And just, man, every single year, Tori, Tori gets it done. Um, it's not the most exciting golf course, in my opinion, as far as the holes. I mean, it's very straightforward. Um, you get some views of the ocean and everything, but my God, if you want excitement, that's your place. That's why we did a little list on our Sirius XM show, Gravy in the Sleeves, of what our like top five, six U.S. Open courses would be. And this was one of mine, just because of how exciting it is every time. It, you, it's so hard for a player to run away from the field at Torrey Pines. Were you in charge of the drone at all or the blimp out there? We did catch a little. They do for the second time this season, we've had a little sneaky piss incident out there on camera. It's getting dangerous out there to relieve yourself. Believe it or not, they do not let me handle very expensive equipment. That's a miss. I feel like that's a miss on their part. I feel like you get some good shots, but I saw the drone going. I was like, then I see a dude doing what you do when you're going to go piss when no one's around. I'm like, he's about to go piss right yep. there. And the drone, it was like, they knew. It's like someone radioed up, like, he's about to piss in the bushes. Make sure, Get the drone out there. I was like, oh, fuck. Yeah. It was a dicey situation. So watch yourself if you're playing on tour right now. You are not safe. If I was in control of the drone, I don't think there'd be much golf or golf course being shown. I'd be in the gallery zooming around. Yeah, there's some beaches. There's some beaches, too. But, I mean, dude, a lot no, outside of the farmers, a lot of golf news since yeah. the last time we came on here, dude. This morning, where do you want to start? As we're filming this right now, Terrell Hatton is apparently yeah. joining Liv. He's still in the field for the AT&T Pebble Beach Pro Am, which, by the way, has a loaded field. It's going to be an awesome tournament out there, just 80 guys. But rumor is 60 mil. He's going over to John Rahm's Legion 13, and we'll be teeing it up this week at Mayakoba. So we'll wait and see what happens with that. But Terrell, one of my favorite guys out there to follow. It's a big loss, uh, I think, for. The American viewership in the PGA Tour, it's not that big a loss. I mean, he is 16th in the world. He's a great player, and he's a great personality, the way he berates himself out there and the way he talks. I love it. But, I mean, great player. Is it a huge loss for the PGA Tour? Probably not. What is a huge loss? Though? Like with John Rahm, I would argue, is as important as anyone is in John golf. Rahm was a huge loss, It's no a doubt. huge loss. After, like, you look at it now, and it's like you look at the U.S. Ryder Cup team. They got a chunk of them. You look at the European Ryder Cup teams of the last two sessions. They got a big chunk of them. The President's Cup's been decimated. They're in deep shit, I think, going forward against the U.S. It's like they got some dudes now. The only thing they're lacking is, like, interest in eyeballs. And how they get it, which leads to our next topic, I'm sure. There's one guy out there. 
Rumor mill churning. He's making a comeback. Anthony Kim, if I'm live golf, I'd be roll I would be throwing a bag at Anthony Kim. Like there's there's no one in my opinion in the world of golf outside of Tiger Woods, because there's Tiger and then there's everybody else. And everybody else, more or less, is replaceable. The one guy that generates the most inf- interest right now in terms of teeing it up at a golf tournament is Anthony Kim. I don't care if it's Liv, PJ Tour, a member guest. If he tees it up in competition, I'm gonna be watching it. Yeah, it's been twelve years since he's played on the PGA tour. I mean, we I think we both agree, arguably top five most talented golfers we've ever come across. I know his resume doesn't show that, but he is a freak. Um, he has a personality. He's different. You know, in a in a game that's so buttoned up, so khaki pants, white collared shirt, he's different. Um, he's got the, you know, the bling all over the belt buckle. He's outspoken. He just brings that energy that I think the game of golf needs. Um, love his personality. It would be awesome, no matter where he plays, whether it's PGA Tour or Live. I hope he goes. I hope he comes back to the PGA Tour. He would play out of the past champions category. Could get a ton of sponsor exemptions. Yeah, everyone, they're going to give it to him. Um, but look, Live has been throwing that money around. If Live wants a big name that's going to cause a lot of buzz and make the PGA Tour probably go, oh shit, um, that would be it. I mean, John Rahm was, in my opinion, it would make it would be bigger news if Live signed Anthony Kim. Over John, John Rahm's a huge loss. There is no doubt about it. That is a huge dude. But Anthony Kim, being American, and all the buzz around him, uh, and just, we don't know what the hell he's been doing the last 12 years. It'd be a huge get for them. But, on the same side, he could come back, t- PJ Tour, sponsors pay him a boat, boatload of money, and he could be out there. I- I'm excited. No matter where he plays, I'll watch. I'm watching it. I don't care where it is. Like I said, member guests, put it on TV, live stream it, whatever. I want to see it. There's no one... I mean, he's been out of the game for 12 years. And I feel like every year, every two years, like just a picture on Instagram of him hanging out somewhere surfaces and people freak out like, oh, my God, Anthony sighting in Chicago. Oh, Anthony sighting walking his dog in L.A. And people go nuts like the mystery and intrigue around AK. There's nothing like so wherever he goes, especially at the beginning, is going to get so much attention. Now, that kind of goes away if he goes out there and doesn't play that well for a while, which I have zero expectations on how he would play. Look at guys like. Will Zalatoris, Daniel Berger have been out for a while. Like coming back, it ain't easy. And they were been far less removed from the game of golf than Anthony Kim has. But the buzz that he will generate the first time he tees it up, I don't give a shit what he shoots. Everyone's going to want to see it wherever it is. And I think I got to assume Liv knows that, uh, as does the PJ Tour. Liv's just in a different ballgame because they can just hand him a bucket of cash and be like, come over here, which if you're going to forfeit your insurance policy, then Anthony would have to if it's no longer a career-ending injury. I think like the safer play, money-wise, would be go to Liv. Do I know where he's going to go? No. Um, but more than anything, I just want to I want to see what it looks like, man. It's no secret. I mean, the buzz behind this guy. I mean, I simply just put out a picture of him on my Twitter. And it got, I believe, over yeah. 650,000 views, which I didn't even say anything. I just put a picture of the guy. Yeah. It, it was a great picture of I was, my friend. Thanks for that, because I was getting a million, like, what's the deal? What's Anthony? Is he going? Is he coming on the pod? It's all this. I was like, what hey, the hell this happened? This is when you just give this emoji. And then I don't know. they're like, oh, yeah, look at this tweet. I was like, okay, here we go. And then sure enough, later that day, article comes out. People here he comes. People just freak shit. Though. Oh, he's going to live. He's going to live. I'm like, I didn't say anything. I just put a picture out there. Just a pal. I had a nice smile. Just a buddy. And you and I agree, like, we get asked, like, who's the best guy you've ever played with and played with some good dudes. But like at the time I played with him in terms of like, if I played a hundred rounds of golf with this guy, the chances of me beating him, who am I going to beat the least amount of times? Like, I think it was him. And it wasn't just like, yeah, he hits it 50 further than me. Like some of the long guys. And then from there he's hitting lob wedges and I'm hitting longer irons. Like, of course it's going to be tough to beat. It's like the shot making, the array of shots, the risk taking all this stuff, man. And his golf swing from what he's posted, it looks Really damn similar to what we saw the last time he played golf, but he hadn't played a tournament in 12 years. But when he comes back, I'm watching it. I don't care where it is. Yep. We'll see what happens. But obviously, those were two very big pieces of news. But the third one, it's official, Sleaze. I will be on the bag. WM Phoenix Open for Taylor Montgomery. Just give us the trophy. It's big, dude. Give us the trophy or we're going to miss the cut. I don't know which one. This is a long ways away, dude. The forecast looks shit. Rain is a possibility. That's a heavy bag mm-hmm. if rain comes into play. Also, I don't know what this does to the evening time. Uh, it's going to be good the for The weekly me. schedule for yeah. you. It might be great. You're going to come in a lot. Fr- we might yeah. not come on Monday with two guys whose voices just well, don't d- work Depending anymore. on how well he plays. But this is, why can't it be a signature event? No cut the week I'm caddying. Tell him when or miss the cut. 
Yeah, that's probably best case scenario. If we're in like on the cut line on on the last, just miss it. We're yeah, done. just come back. You got one sixty five flag, like really? I thought it was one thirty. No, 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 sixty five. Trust me. Uh, but Hate I'm very it. excited. I've actually already texted a few guys from Taylor Made and been like, "Hey, go ahead and give Taylor the okay that he can carry the small bag." Phoenix Open Week. It's, it's the People's Dude, Open. It's vital in negotiations. I got it the first year with Dub. Did not get it the second year, and I was like, "This that's t- why this you contract's the cut the getting year. shittier and shittier." Yeah, I was dragging ass. Forgot the pin sheet. Thing. It's a problem. Yeah, I'd be on that quickly. All right. Well, contract. speaking of Wyndham Clark, mm. he is our ep- he is our guest this week on Subpar. This is a fantastic episode. Talk about basically his, all of 2023 for him, how his life has changed from not just being a PGA Tour winner to a major champion, and we get into some really fun stories at the end. I don't want to spoil any any of it for you. Here's Wyndham Clark on Subpar. All right, all right. A lot has changed since we had this young man on the show last. He's been everywhere. ESPN, the Today Show, is now a major champion and a Ryder Cupper and just turned 30 years of age. U.S. Open champion, Wyndham Clark in the house. Buddy boy. What's up, boy? Good to have you. Dub. You guys. Look at the kid, huh? Wow. Glowing. Yeah, glowing. I've, I've never glowing. seen Slee so excited. Yeah, Glow, glowing. I, know, I don't he, get hyped up about he much. He just wants to roast me. I just I yeah, can feel I just, it. How long I do I go just, into the show before yeah, we unload? Literally, he's going to build me up and then tear me right back down. That's oh, what you to need. the bottom. <laughs> That's what you Absolute need, dude. bottom. Especially now. Major champion when you leave here, Jicky Jack. Yeah, yeah. literally. Mm-hmm. I'm going to question just everything. Bash that ego right down <laughs> where it belongs. Well, happy 30th. Thank you. By the way. Um, Thank you. You had a good time with it. I feel old. Very old. Does it feel old? 30 burger? Yeah, it seems like I got to be, you know, get my shit like together. Up. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like I got to literally be smarter and more adult like i gotta make you know smart decisions seems like i gotta do all yeah, those things well like you've you always figured been, out you've always been financially responsible very yeah i'm just you now know you don't need to be other yeah i guess that's right. but other <laughs> things you know i just you know you gotta that's make actually money. valid because you are very fiscally responsible i would call very you. frugal and yeah. at times like when you have them like you there's times where you need to pinch pennies right and you need yeah. to be conservative with yourself now you really don't but it's that's like a mindset that i feel it like is. i don't think it's I'll hard ever... to go from like who gives a shit now i can do whatever i want Bo is actually just giving Bo hosper just giving me some uh some grief he was like, "We're gonna start this new trend with you, of dying with zero. And I'm, oh yeah, wait he's a like, second, what Bo Hostler. Well, why he he seems to claim that he actually, I feel like he spends it quite a bit. He brought his own food to Whisper Rock. I think well, that's his health. I think that was a health thing. thing. That was a health thing. He told me it's convenient. He also goes to dinner by himself to like Maple and Ash and Ambassador Club. Yeah, he goes Club. nice. Like he goes to nice these shit. he goes to these nice places. Drops like 150 on himself by himself. Well, good job, Bo. I'm yeah. proud of you. Bo, Bo but he gives me so much afraid. crap. He, like, he was making fun of me for a bet, and I was like, I'm not going to just give you $100. And he's like, stop being so cheap. I go, no, I'm going to lose this bet. I'm not going to give it, you know. So he said this new thing for me in 2024, die with zero. It's just give everyone money. Well, I guess. Yeah. I guess. <laughs> give me $100. It like it's going out of style. Every day. It's not Make gonna... your last check bounce. That's what a lot of people say. Yeah. You know what I, I mean? mean, eventually I'll get to that point. Yeah. You got, you're going to start having to spend, dog. I mean. Charles Barkley said his goal is to die with zero as well. He's like, my freeloading families lived off me enough. I'm done with them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so he's probably trying to penny punch a little too now. Yeah. Have you done anything cool though, like for yourself as a reward for the year? Um, I'm yeah. I bought a piece of land and hopefully going to build a house. Yeah, that's so. If you're going to spend on something, yeah, that's it. You but know? my but here's this is how frugal I am. Is I'm thinking of building it as a spec house to turn and sell it and try to make money. Out you were there. telling me that the other day. I was like, why not just buy it, build whatever the hell you want, like build a palace. Dude, I know, but I'm that you like, live in for forever. It's in a great spot but of town right now, too. It's like you know, it's me. I live in a three bedroom place by myself. It's like it's perfect. So I don't need anything else. So I'm like, yeah, maybe I can. Try what's to make like some money? Build I'm gonna it, flip this thing. Spend two years building it and then flip it right away and then go start over. I'm like, dude, what's the yeah. point? Like. I, I don't know. I I was raised this way. Okay, you know, it's not the worst. That, like, <laughs> it, you might not have as much fun. It's as better the, as that the other than way, me but... being on athletes that go broke. Yeah, yeah. The bro oh, just watched one of those shows episode. the other yeah. night. They're great. Great thirty for thirty. They have a hell of a ride on the way down, though. Be like Bernie yeah. Kosar, pay for thirty-one cell phones or whatever. Just somehow don't know that. I heard one of a guy that I won't say the name, but an NBA player. He was just started dating this girl, became his fiance, then wife, and. First time he had her like go shopping for him, he goes, "Hey, can you go get me fifty white polo T-shirts and fifty pairs of like jeans that he likes to wear? That's literally all he wore. Fifty, fifty, fifty of each, like XXL, whatever. Wear them once. Roughly out. around fifty-one, fifty-two days goes by, and he goes, "Hey, honey, can you go get me 
50 and 50. And she's like, why? And he goes, well, I need new shirts. And she goes, well, what happened to the other ones? He goes, well, I just throw them away. She goes, are you kidding me? She's like, we have a washer and dryer. He goes, yeah, I don't use that. She goes, how long have you been doing this? Well, my entire career. And he was like a 15-year vet. Sick. So literally, that's how you go, bro. I might know who it is. Jeans. I mean, <laughs> what? So I don't think he, I've had 50 pairs of jeans in my life. Yeah, he just would go and have someone do it, or he would do it, just buy all of them, and then wear them once, throw them away. Apparently, and this could be the same dude, but when when Iverson, when AI was on the Nuggets, he was would send his crew... And they'd get him, like, he would just show up to the plane, no bag, no, like a carry on, maybe like a duffel with his music and stuff in it or whatever. And they'd be like, cash. you got a bag? He's like, no, no, my boys are already there. Like, they got me taken care of. He'd get to the hotel, wear his stuff, and they'd come back with no stuff. Just leave it in the hotel, like shoes and everything. I mean, well, and that's you why could he, do that. That's you why he was on that pack, show. Dude, that'd be sweet. Yeah. Maybe I'll bring that to the PJ tour. Yeah, I think you should. Just travel with nothing. I God, think you should. That is a wild life. I can't imagine. Like and you employ like 22 people, which you don't even know what any of them do. Yeah. Imagine having an entourage where you just, they're always at your house and you just don't even know. Like you're out of town and you come home and they're throwing raiders at your house. Yeah. I got to tell you Could this pay quick the rent. I shared this on Sirius <laughs> XM the other day with Slee. So um, Shaq was on his podcast. He talked about back in his day, uh, you know, obviously the game ends at night. He sleeps in. Well, he would always have a bunch of people at his house. He'd wake up because their deal was they'd set their alarm so they could be downstairs at 10 o'clock in the morning. He would come down with a pile of cash and they would watch Maury Povich and they'd bet on who the father is. <laughs> Are you that is a gambling game that I can get behind. <laughs> that would be amazing. He's like, it was the most fun. He's like, I got a thousand on that guy. It's, <laughs> him. it's him. It's blue shirt. Guaranteed it's blue shirt. Look at him. He looks guilty. Wow. That By would the be... way, if you had a DVR at that time, you could just print oh, and be like, all right, let's God. fire it up. Watch it the Especially night before. Like hung over. Just That'd about a thousand. Incredible. You guys just sit there with your How boys. How do you get this right every time? <laughs> yeah, that would be amazing. <laughs> we did it to a buddy of mine in college once. He loved Jeopardy and thought he was super smart. And we recorded one and got like the dumbest guy we knew. I was like, dude, he could beat you in Jeopardy. And we watched it like the day before. And I was like, all right, you only need to get like six of these right. Don't get all of them right. You know what I mean? Beat him in Jeopardy. Had no idea. Did you awesome. ever tell him? It was awesome. Yeah, we did after the fact. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's yeah. nice. I, I say he's about to find out. After he, <laughs> after he paid. After, after he, he paid. paid. Yeah, 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 of course. And, and then did he ask done. for his money back or? Huh? Yeah, tough shit. Yeah, yeah. Bet's a bet. You got to be smarter. Yeah. But what's life like for Wyndham Clark now? Major champion. Obviously, it all started at Wells Fargo when you got the W there. But things changed, obviously, very quickly, going from not winning on the PJ Tour to you had a really nice career going, and then you win that massive event. It was a signature mm -hmm. event. And then it leads into a major championship now. I mean, you're featured pairings every single week. Yeah. Things are good. Yeah. it's. Uh, I mean, it was, it was a crazy year. I was playing really good golf leading into Quail Hollow and a couple of putting changes then make tons of putts. And then that leads into winning the U.S. Open. And then the cherry on top was making the Ryder Cup team. And it would have really been amazing if we won it. But it's, it's kind of amazing. In one year, I kind of checked off career goals that you know i'd say a lot of people have when they get into professional golf They're like okay i'd love to win a tournament i'd love to hopefully contend or win a major and i'd love to make a Ryder cup team and i did that all in in one year so yeah it's honestly kind of surreal and now you know now you're in feature groups like you said and people are asking my opinion on things and i was like oh you know eight months ago you didn't really care what i thought but now, now you <laughs> Now your opinion matters, yeah. mm -hmm. which is yeah, it's crazy. I mean, it's what I've always dreamed of, and but uh, definitely, as much as I would like to say nothing's changed, a lot has changed. Can you talk about like coming down the stretch at Quail Hollow, like trying to get your first PGA Tour win? I mean, you were in cruise control. I was with your group there, you and Xander, and y'all put on a clinic on Saturday, and then Sunday. I mean, you looked like you'd won twenty times on tour. You looked great coming down the stretch. But can you talk about the difference there versus coming down the stretch and trying to win at the U.S. Open, or, or was there a difference? I, I've said this on a few different interviews that I really don't think I would have won the US Open if I didn't win um, didn't win at Quail Hollow. And so Quail Hollow to me was almost a bigger hurdle for me and my career and mentally than it was the US Open. Because um, I learned so much of myself that day. You know, I started off with a bogey, then hit it, you know, right on hole two um, on Sunday, then missed a the green left, and then had a great up and down. And, you know, I had a two shot lead and went to one and then Xander birdies, it goes to all square. And I think in the past I would have gotten ahead of myself and I probably would have shot an even par or one over and, you know, you lose by one or two and you just look at yourself and you're pissed and, you know, still great finish. And everyone's like, oh, great finish. You're close. But I learned so much in that and I dug deep and I didn't get ahead of myself and I just continued to stay within my process. 
And then, you know, then I had a four shot lead with five, six holes to go. And then it was found myself in like, you know, don't screw up mode. <laughs> and yep. and what was great, and I really was proud of myself is I kept making birdies. I was like, hey, just stick with what we've been doing all week. And um so I think that really helped me going into the US Open. And I found myself with a three shot lead with four holes to go. And granted, I you know, the, it's the first time all week that I really checked the leaderboard and really thought about winning. Truthfully, like obviously at night you do, but during the round is the first time I ever thought about it was when I birdied 14. And then, cause it was funny. Cause I, I birdied it and then I looked and I saw, <clears throat> saw Rory like watching to see if I made the putt. Like afterwards he would kind of look and he goes, okay, he made birdie. And, and, and then I looked and I looked over the score and I was like, Oh my gosh, I got a three shot lead. And I kind of just, I kind of, you know, fantasized about the win and then I came back and had the easiest wedge shot in the world, make a bogey. And then that's honestly, it might've been the bet, one of the best things for me. Cause then I got refocused. Cause I was like, all right, like we're not going to be the person that blows a three shot lead with four holes to go. And then I got right back into it. Yeah. I bogeyed the next hole, but I hit three really good shots. Um, and then I had played hole 17 great and 18. And so I really do think that win at Quail Hollow was the reason. Um, that I won the U.S. Open. So and I actually would say it was tougher for me at Quail than it was at the U.S. Open. Go back to that final round and like, is there one shot? Because there's a few that I could pinpoint off the top yeah. of my head, but I'm curious to hear it from you. Is there one that you look to that you're like, that was the one, that one calmed me down or that was the one where I, I knew I was going to get this thing done mm. or that you're most proud of? I It's hard. Bec yeah. I, I would say it's more of a stretch. I think eight, nine, 10, 11. The 11 chip was one of them for me. Like, yeah. That thing was disgusting. I, I think so... It, Eight's decision for me was massive um, to not, uh, not necessarily decision, but more of like calming down and realizing bogey was a good score there. I mean, it sucked. I was on cruise control at that point. I was two under, four on into a par five, just licking my chops mm -hmm. about to hopefully make another birdie and kind of get a little, I pull it, hit a bet, not a bad shot, but pull it, get an unfortunate lie, you know, and then go right under it. And then that's the first time my heart just went from, yeah. you know, 60 beats a minute to double that and 120 yes 120 thank you nice Gosh, man. that pencils that pencils yeah. yeah and john john i think he's learned a lot because i think in the past i think he'd have been kind of quiet he he was like hey calm down all we need to do is get this on the green two putt we make bogey we we're fine we're still in the tournament Let's not get cute here. And he, he said that to me and I said, okay. And so I just got the ball out and unfortunately went over the green, but then I had a great up and down. And then the next hole, I put myself in a tough spot, another up and down, then make a par on 10 and then put myself in one of the worst spots on 11. I want to go back to eight real quick because I've never got to ask you this. I was calling it for Sirius XM. So we're in the booth and obviously see on TV what everybody else at home is seeing. But when you went under that first one, like we, we never saw the ball come out, never saw anything like and then the next one popped out fine. Was the second lie that much better? Because I was sitting there thinking, oh, my God, we could be here for a while. No, it was the opposite. It was the opposite. The, so the first one was the first one was awesome. Like I on John, John initially was like, hey, let's just get it on the green. Yeah. And my, you know, my John always calls it early ego. I had all ego <laughs> in the good. shot because yeah, I was like, close. I go, I'm making birdie. I, I mean, this is fine. It was a good lie. The only thing was I couldn't like if this was the grass, I couldn't yeah. see the ball. So I, I had to do this to be like, okay, the ball's there. Okay, ball's here. And I had a fine light. It's just when I went here, I totally missed. And I just, I opened the just face too right much and just it. went right under Okay. It. So then I it got go, to where oh, I actually was like. When it dropped down, I was like, dude, this might be unplayable. Yeah. You know, he took one. I know. And, and that I was, was the one that he could get out and get 100%, on. A hundred percent. Like I, that's where I was like, oh my God. I mean, the only thing you couldn't do. Now, the good thing was, is it got to where the ground was. So then all I could do is I just yeah. had to like hack it out. But yeah, that. Yeah, it was scary. It was, uh, believe me. I yeah, because you were cruising up to that point. It looked good. The other one that I had penciled, and maybe you'd have it too, was the three went on 14. Was yeah. Just well, yeah. Sick. Yeah. <laughs> well, so the difficulty on, I think, 11 was, I mean, all world as far as I'm not trying to toot my own horn, but I am in this situation. It was bare Bermuda. I was into the grain, and I had to hit, I mean, it was 15 feet above my head. And it's so funny as John was like, hey, let's just go over here. I'm like, no, I got it. Because I just, for some reason, I just felt good on that shot. And I said, just trust it. Just literally, you know, 
slapped the ground and the ball came out perfect. And I actually thought I made it. I, literally in my mind, if there was a mic, I'd have been like, that's it. Because it came off perfect, landed where I wanted. So that that to me is one of the best up and downs of my life. And then, yeah, the, the three wood, I mean, I didn't realize that no one really hit that green that day. And then to feather it in, in that, you know, 15 like foot area. Five yeah, yards wide. It's literally five yards wide. And I wish I made the putt because a guy afterwards, like, you know, a month later came up and he said, hey, we're doing a special on maybe some of the best shots of all time in, in a U.S. Open history. He goes, unfortunately, yours is not going to be in the best shots, but it's going to be maybe go down as the best three would. And I was like, why not the best shots? He goes, well, you missed the putt. And I was like, really? He goes, yeah, typically when you pull out, like you either have to hold the shot out or then make the putt. And I was like, oh, that sucks. But um, that's the best two shots. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I know. Not but one, he, but he's know? just kind of saying like the score. He's like, yeah, well, you get I up get there it. and then you just two putted. I need you to not say toot your own horn anymore because of a past guest on here, Garrett Bradbury. Shout out to him, center for the Minnesota Vikings. It's called Self Suck. Self Suck? Yeah. 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 <laughs> he brought that here, and we love that. It's actually $25 yeah. into a kitty, but we're going to let you slide they on that it. one. Since, right. it went, since it was in consideration for one of the greatest shots ever. They do a deal with, um, in the lineman room. Anytime you self suck, brag about yourself. You have to put twenty bucks in the pot. Oh, okay. That's All great. Right. Yeah. So well, really, they got well, a, unfortunately, we're on a, doing a podcast about myself. So is that just still counts? Do I just give you a couple still hundred counts. to yeah. start? Let's start with five. <laughs> yeah, we'll give okay. one to Bo. Okay. Since he okay. felt like yeah, he got yeah, cheated yeah, out yeah, after yeah. that. After you win a tournament like that, like you're riding high, you're doing all the show. I mean, dude, you're on the Today Show. Like shit changes quickly. How long does it take before you feel like you're back to normal? Like normal routine, doing the same things you were doing, and like you can just kind of focus on. All right. Now let's get back to regular. well. I had like a two day hangover for sure, physical physical hangover, and then um, you know then I went and played the next week. I mean, you're doing so many interviews, you're doing so many things. Everyone's pulling you all these different directions. You're like, all right, I just want to focus on golf. Um, fortunately, I took a trip to Italy and Portugal for two weeks, which was really fun. Right after, like a week after, which is already planned for a friend's wedding. And that was honestly the best thing because I could just get away. And people over there don't – they don't really – I mean, I could walk yeah, yeah. around and there was no issue. Um, and so I would say pretty much I was not normal until Chicago of uh, um, the My playoffs. Yeah, yeah, so BMW. BMW, I was finally like, okay, I'm ready to – like I was hitting good shots and I felt like I could score. And I had a good week. I had a good week going and then I ended up finishing like 14th or 15th. And then played good at the tour championship. So, so it, it took, took you me a, like get a six week hangover. Hundred percent. Yeah. I mean, it's you are you're in your thirties now, now, son. Yeah, you're in your thirties yeah. now, dog. <laughs> well, that's what happened. I was. That's trying, what yeah. happens now. Yeah. You get old and what's raggedy. The coo- what's the coolest place you took the U.S. Open trophy? We've taken it so many places. Um, <laughs> I mean, it's gone international. I went to Cabo for my thirtieth. You've been international more than any human on the planet 100%. in the last six months. Yeah, I've traveled the world. I love to travel, but yeah, I've been international. So Cabo, went to Vegas. Let's see where else did it go. Went to Colorado. Went to an Oregon Duck game, which yeah, was, that was cool. That yep. was actually probably one of the coolest things because they really, um, they really honored me well, and they I came out on the field, did this whole thing. They had a sick video, and then I held the trophy up and. You know, we were in a box, and then afterwards, I got to go in the locker room with the team and got to hear Coach Lanning give you know this incredible post game thing because they're playing the Buffs next. And he came in and he first off ripped the team. They we beat Hawaii like fifty six to three, and he came in. He goes, you know, he's like, "Did anyone know what the score was?" And, and no one answers. He's like, he goes, "I don't give a what the score was." He goes, "We had eight personal penalties. We can't have that if we're trying to be the best team in the country." And he went on this whole rant. And then he goes, "We got the team that I want next." And he goes, "He goes, prime time, show time. I don't give a what time it is. It's duck time." And then everyone was like getting going, and I'm like getting chills. I'm like, "Oh man, I want to. <laughs> I'm ready to go." Yeah. And then these guys start doing this football fight song, which I guess only the football team does. And it's like this really cool thing. And they were just, and then he came over right afterwards, sweating and just had the most intense <laughs> eyes, intense eyes I've ever seen. And he was like, nice to meet you. And I was like, oh my Jesus. God, yeah. like, holy, you know, where I was do I like, sign? Yeah, yeah. where do I sign? I'm ready to go. What do you say about um, Colorado? He's like, it, we're playing for championships. They're playing, they're playing for, for clicks yeah, and uh, yeah. views and all that yeah. type of yeah. stuff. He was it, not afraid to go But it started even at, before. At like, it was so cool. Like, honestly, I, and I told everybody, the line was 21. I said, I gave one of my buddies 28 points. I said, I'll give you 28. He goes, he's going to run up the score because he doesn't care. And yeah, sure enough. To, that was probably my only good sports bet 
of the year. Ever. <laughs> <laughs> That's like, insider knowledge. Yeah, yeah. A little inside info. Yeah, what do you want? 35? Yeah. Take it. Yeah, it exactly. ain't going to stop. Yeah. Well, it's, with, go ahead. Well, I was going to say, with winning the signature event, the U.S. Open, you obviously rocketed up the Ryder Cup points list. I believe you ended up finishing second when it was all said and done. Mm-hmm. Um, booked your ticket to Rome. What was that moment like? Obviously, it looked like for several months you were going to be on that Ryder Cup team after you won the U.S. Open, but once it finally was real, like I'm sure you went and tried on all the uniforms and yeah. all that, got fitted for all that. I mean, it had to be ridiculous. It, well, the crazy thing is a lot of those guys, I think it was a very stressful year, and obviously now I'm going to go through that to where you're on the list and you're number five, and then as a year, you know, and you're, you go to seven, eight, nine, ten, and then you're like, oh, my gosh, I'm going to miss it. I essentially felt like I went from – you know, not even really being on the list, winning Quail Hollow kind of crept up there, and then I win the US Open, and now it's like, well, you're on the done on the team. Yeah. So I didn't really have much time to think about it, and then next, you know, I'm trying on the stuff, and then I'm on the team trip, and I'm like, this is just, I mean, it was honestly wild um, to think about. But the Ryder Cup is as cool, if not cooler, than what everyone says. I mean, the it's amazing how you play against, you know, these guys on the US team and. Normally you're just trying to beat their head in, and the next you know you guys are all buddy buddy, and and you really are. You're like, hey, we're we're representing our country, and we're trying to win, and we're trying to do the best we can, and have fun while doing it. And um, you know, I guys that I didn't think I would be close with, I became close with, and same with the caddies. And you know, we had we had an awesome time. I mean, outside of the outcome, it truly was. Even some of the other guys said it was one of the most fun Ryder Cups, and we were all really close, despite what people said. I mean, we all, almost all of us grew up playing golf together. So we're all within, you know, probably two, three years of each other, other than maybe like Colin and probably, probably Colin. Um, but like I was two years between Sam and Scotty. So we played junior golf, you know, high school golf and college golf against each other. And then Jordan, Justin and Patrick and Xander, we all played the same thing. So we were all super close. And so that was really neat because we've known each other since we were probably 10 years old so we were really close and um i mean it, there's so many great stories some i can't tell but some yeah, I, that's can. What, I mean the team events i i've obviously never sniffed making a team i play the walker cup and i mean it's just it's so different because golf's an individual game and when you get to team up with each other and represent your country <clears throat> it's a total different level like i'll never give in that the live team stuff is interesting to me like that's just not not for me golf's an individual game but every other year when you get to put the red white and blue on i mean it's truly special and like you said you make those bonds that you have for a lifetime yeah i think i think the difference like you know i think the difference between let's say uh live teams and uh a rider cup team or president cup team is just simply the fact that you're representing your country mm-hmm. versus just playing for you the know, cliques. The cliques, yeah. Um, Why do they always don't get sleep on dog? the cliques? Why do they always don't get sleep on the Every cliques, time we dog. do an example on anything, it's always the cliques. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> but I think just there's something so powerful about representing your country. I think anyone that's, you know, been in an Olympics or anything, they say there's just something about going there and your entire country rooting for you. So I think that's what separates any team golf. Um, and same thing with college golf. Like I think college golf, the reason why that's so cool is because you're representing something greater than yourself, which is your school. And mm-hmm. they're the alma, you know, all the alumni are super into it and invested. And no one's really invested in the cliques quite yet. So <laughs> poor cliques. Yeah. So we'll see. All right, some big news here from Subpar. We have officially launched our own YouTube page. Make sure to subscribe at golf underscore subpar on YouTube. Check out this week's video. Uh, like, subscribe, do all the stuff. Colt, we got some cool behind the scenes stuff coming and uh, give you a little outside look at some of the stuff outside the studio. So please like, please subscribe. You're the best listeners in the game. We love you. Back to the show. Who are some of the guys you said, I got close with some guys that I didn't think I ever would or didn't think I would. Like who, who's the guy that you went on that team not knowing well and you came out and being like, that's, that's my boy. Well, you know, Brian Harmon was definitely one guy that, Brian and he could he'd get on here and tell you the story. I was an absolute um, like just idiot child in the fall. I played an event with him. We were in, f- I was in fourth place and I just completely crumbled playing. I mean, I'm hitting it unbelievable, missing putts left and right and just lost it. I broke two clubs in the round and I was being a little baby. Taught him and, That's my boy. Yeah. That's my boy. Yeah. And no yeah. allowance for you. Yeah. I broke, I broke a wedge. I threw a putter. I think I broke another. I think I broke three clubs in that round. Still finished seventh or eighth or something but I, I he afterwards was like 
you you need to go like what is wrong he pretty much got in my face <laughs> the fuck's the matter with you yeah he's yeah. like what is wrong with you and i you know i was so pissed i wanted to you know beat that little guy in but <laughs> so, that's good <laughs> that little I, guy you yeah. want to beat Harmon because he said yeah. what the hell's the matter with you you just broke three no flags. I know but I was just oh, so God. heated but I was just like you know screw you for coming up and saying anything to me yeah, but, but he was totally in the right I was in the wrong yeah and so ever since then, I was kind of not scared of Brian, but I was like, you know, I was embarrassed. I was so embarrassed that I was, you know. Yeah, that, that you I, like made a fool of yourself in front of a dude myself. like Harmon. So coming into this thing, I was like, hey, this guy hates me. This guy hates me. And, um, you know, fortunately through, you know, his wife and my girlfriend getting along well. And we actually spent a really cool night where we stayed late and listened because we were, we were both enjoying it. Some of these guys, I think had been on many teams so they're like hey i'm just i'm going to bed early i'm gonna, I'm gonna go get ready we were like i mean we've never been here we're in rome we're we're at this amazing place and philip phillips is playing just for us i mean there was 40 people there I and mean, the guy won american idol or whatever show it was and he's a pretty top performer and he's just playing for us and our entire team leaves but we're like dude let's just stay this is awesome so we stayed for another hour and a half and we talked and we had so much fun had wine together and I was like, man, this guy's a really good dude. And he even said it afterwards. He goes, I really enjoyed getting to know you. And I think he wanted to elaborate and say like, I used to think I you used were, to think you're yeah, a, I think bomb. You're, you're yeah. a little bitch. And he's like, now I really respect you. And so Brian, now I, I have, think you're kind of a little bitch. Yeah. I have the, I have the most respect for Brian. I think he he's gets such a stud. Dude, I mean, his swings like the best on tour. He's just a good, he's dude, literally too. a bulldog. I know he is a Georgia bulldog, but he's, he's fr- literally, we, we've decided we, we're going to call him the Frenchie. Yeah, he's the a, French. He's, he's the little bulldog. Yeah, the French bulldog. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah he don't quit. He's no, awesome. he doesn't. He's so that's definitely one guy. Um, but then I was already pretty close with a lot of guys. Um, you know, I I've grown up with some of those guys. So, but yeah. Brooks, I'd say Brooks too. Brooks yeah. and I, Brooks and I really kind of hit it off and became buddies. And so let let's talk because you sat Friday morning, which. Probably it was expected. I mean, being a rookie and everything, but yeah. it's still got to be tough to know, like, okay, the team's going out there, got all this nervous energy. Like, I want to get out there and play. What was that morning like? And then finally, when it comes Friday afternoon, you go out there with Max Homa. What was it like on that first tee? It's funny. And I actually, you know, if I'm hopefully make future teams, I'm going to tell any rookie how scary it is and all the stuff because I think they overhyped it because I wasn't that nervous. Really? Interesting. And I maybe. I don't know. I I think part of it is I think because it is a team event and because I was teeing off first with um, and my first match was best ball. It just kind of seemed like I had a, you know, I had Iron Byron there with Max. So yeah, you, like, got a, yeah, you got a parachute. Like the yeah, Max bogey. is here. Yeah, you know what I mean? so it yeah. just didn't seem as bad. Like if I started off with a bogey, well, you got Max, Max is gonna make par or yeah. what? You know, it just wasn't as bad versus I think teeing off on a final round for to win a major, you're like, every shot matters. Mm -hmm. And so I think in my mind, I was a little more nervous than those. Or alternate shot though. Like you could flip it, but then you'd probably be like, if I I don't want to put Max in a bad spot. Yeah, so alternate shot, I didn't play any of it. And that is a nerve wracking format. Like when I play in the Zurich, I mean, it is, you're like, oh my gosh. Like I, you don't want to be the guy that hits it out of bounds with your your teammate. So, um, So I wasn't as nervous. Now the atmosphere is amazing. And the way they set it up, I mean, we had this long ass walk all the way there and the thing set up like a Coliseum and you go underneath and you just hear all the noise above you. It really was so cool because you're like, I'm about to walk out in the Coliseum. And the hardest thing was calming your nerves down because it's like so loud, the songs, everything. And then you walk out and then you hear all the boos. And then, you know, Team Europe walk, walks out and they go nuts. And then they start singing these songs. I mean, it was the coolest. Their fans are incredible. It's the, the best. best. Like we're as far as you can be from competition in that thing. And like you get just standing there, like you get goosebumps. Like if you like golf, that's it. It is. It's the coolest. The I mean, the only thing that sucked about, I'd say that whole thing was the fact that it was hard to watch here in the States because it was such terrible yeah, the time, time zones. Yeah, but, but one thing, I know you guys mentioned this and I'll challenge you guys is we got to get mm. Team USA with some better We volunteered. Songs. I mean, We're it's unbelievable. I got, a, I got a list of ideas already ready. And New York, what better place to unleash I know. the beast? 100%. I mean, if we just had some unification, I mean, if we could just get everybody to actually do these five songs, it would be so great. Because everyone just goes USA and then it lasts for about 20 seconds. And then they drown out with this long two-minute song that's awesome. Mm-hmm. And and they also have 
I believe that we will win. That's a team. That's a yeah. We have that. I'm one. like, those are the two we have. I'm like, yeah. really? That's all. We have two years to come up with some stuff. Yeah, we do. I hopefully let's get and, Rihanna out on the tee singing the cool, New York. I mean, come on, <laughs> yeah, exactly. let's go. Mm. That is that's that Alicia Keys, sick. but yeah. Oh, yeah. that's what I'm. Yeah. Either way, yeah, yeah. Either way, Alicia Keys. We bring Rihanna too. We could do some Frank She's Sinatra. She's not from the U.S., but who gives she a shit? If she wants to be care. there, we yeah. should have her there. <laughs> yeah. I will lobby for that. Yeah. Sorry. I'll be the chief Alicia, Rihanna officer. You're a goddess. My fault. The CRO. But it would be good because, I mean, they even do individual guys. I mean, okay. it was incredible. Like, well, every guy I played with had a song. It was so cool. But they, they would come up with stuff overnight. Like The, the hats off Rory, to Cantlay yeah. was incredible. Dude, they have new... It's like, I don't know how they coordinated. I don't know if it's like one little pocket of people it, and then they're like all right they teach everyone on this is what we're going with today but like it's otherwise you don't know who's going to be there how do you coordinate it all but somehow it's 100 percent their culture just i think from yeah. the a football, lot of the soccer, soccer stuff too they culture, changed the yeah. words you were the anchor match on single in single so i don't think you got to hear it but after the whole thing with cantley and rory and joe lakov and all that the next day what's the song in your head cranberries uh zombie zombie cranberries yeah so they changed it to in your head rory rory yeah, and the whole crowd was doing it and i was like, like how the hell did they like organize this wow. overnight? Yeah, it's so it was cool. like a whole. Production. There's got to be like there's got to be some people that start it and yeah. then everyone picks up on it yeah. and they start it yeah. and they takes one time. We need because we have yeah, some of those guys that you yeah. know. It's not we have the Viking. Science. You know the Vikings that go to every like we need some people. There are some obviously people that people focus on that go to every Ryder Cup and it's cool. But now they need to come up with songs. We have put our name in the hat to help. Yeah, you know, spearhead this thing. Yeah, schedule's clear. Well, I, knowing you two, nothing will happen. And whoa, <laughs> we do have a lot of talk, not a lot of follow. But for yeah. the, this is the right. This is bigger than yeah. us, dude. Right, grow yeah, the game. Bigger than yeah, this is for the country. Grow the game. Okay, okay. Grow the game. Um, we got to ask about Saturday night. Obviously, in that last match, you're playing with Cantley up against Rory, and who was the other? And Matt Fitzpatrick. And obviously, things were rather interesting throughout the day. But I mean, Cantley makes the huge putt. But take us through that whole last couple of holes. Them obviously chirping Cantlay with everything that was going on, but just the scene on 18. Yeah, well, it started. I mean, hats off, no, no pun intended. <laughs> to nice, nice. To yeah, you know, you see what I did there. Mm -hmm. uh, to Pat because he handled that so well. So that it started on. I mean, obviously, it started the day before because he wasn't wearing a hat, and there, everyone made it some. I don't even know who did this. It's media. They're trying to make something bigger than what it was. But like on the fifth or sixth hole, people started chirping him about his hat. And by the time we got to maybe, I want to say 10 or 11, they started saying hats off to your bank account. And then it led you. <laughs> then to like a bunch of different things to where coming down 16 was probably one of the coolest scenes I've ever seen was, I mean, it's this drivable hole, probably 20, 30,000 people, I don't even know, on that hole itself. And everyone had their hats off going hats off to your bank account and waving it. And PC was like, Oh look, everyone's waving at me. Dude, everyone and, loves yeah. me. Yeah, he's like, oh, I'm huge in Rome. He's like, wow, it's crazy. Look at everyone loves me, and it was really funny because I was like, wow, like most people wouldn't have taken it that way. So he handled it great. Um, and he birdied 16, 17, and eighteen. Yeah. So there's on. a funny story behind it. I I still own money. So it was kind of a, <laughs> yeah. So it was, I get line. It was a little bit of a curveball. Um, I was never supposed to play with with Pat, and I'm out there ready. Like hey, you know, Zach says, hey, you're you're going, um, I'll let you know who you're, who you're going with. And I assumed I was going with Max again because Max and I played awesome in that match. Unfortunately, we lost 17-18, but we played really good, so I was expecting to go again. And they go, hey, you're playing with Pat. And I was like, whoa, total curveball kind of threw me off my game a little bit. And we're on the range, and I could tell Pat was kind of pissed, and he was kind of quiet. I'm like, man, we don't have much team mojo right now. And so I turned to Pat, and I said, hey, Pat, I played money games with you and you're the literally the best in money games. I've never taken money from you. You know, I've shot seven under and you shoot 10 under. Like it doesn't matter. You beat, you beat me in money games. So I said, first one to five, five birdies is uh first or yeah. First one to five birdies is for 5,000. Every birdie after that is another thousand. So I said, uh -oh. I said, I hope you take me for all the money I got. And he, and he goes, all right, I like that. And Joe LaCava looked at me and goes, Nice job. Because like he was like, hey, this is good. So this is why you're wanting to build a spec house and sell it now. Yeah, exactly. you got to pay Pat. Yeah, so <laughs> so then we're walking off, and I said, hey, Pat, remember, 5000 He goes, I, he goes I, I got, or he goes, I know the deal. And he said it like that, and I turned to John, I go, we're about to lose <laughs> 10 Gs. <laughs> we're about to lose. This is good and bad. We're about to lose 10 Gs. And then he hits the fairway, then hits it to like six feet on the first hole. And I literally turned to John, I'm like, 
I mean, we're going to win the match, but I'm going to owe so much money. And he whiffed the putt. And, I'll, and I think that honestly kept Pat from shooting nothing that day because that I think he thought there's no way he'd miss that six-footer, and it kind of got him rattled. But so long story short, is he gets to five birdies first, so he wins five grand. I think I made five birdies, and he made like seven or eight, so I owe him money. But he birdied 16, and he kind of smiled at me, and then I'm obviously trying to birdie, and he birdied 17, and then, I mean, it was – Honestly, and then we get to 18, and it was one of those things where you could kind of tell he was back in the zone again. And, you know, I look back at it, and I'm like, man, I mean, really, is he going to make this one? And sure enough. It's crazy because, I mean, you you talk about him the same way everybody else does, and I, I see it when I follow him out there. I mean, the man's got stones. Like, the no moment is too big. No. That's why I think it's so shocking, like, his major championship record. I think he has two top tens in his career. Yeah. Like, it shocks me because he's a killer. I know it's on. I mean, it, I would take him. I mean, over even some of the best players in the world, like even you know Tiger and his prime. Like if you're playing him and, and Pat is playing good and like her feeling good about his game in a money game, he doesn't stop. Like he can shoot 59, and you're like, are you kidding me? He'll be out of out of the hole. We were playing at medalist one day. He was out of the hole. He chips it like in play to have a shot and then holds it from like 60 yards and wins the hole. And I had like a 15 footer and then missed. And I was like, yeah, classic. And I lose again. Yep. And then he hits it on, you know, and then he makes a 40 footer. I mean, it's just, he kind of has that it, it factor that mm. is amazing. So it was really fun on 18 coming down and we had, we all had basically birdie looks and, and, and him dropping the longest oh, one was oh, just filthy. No, it was, so it was the first like shot of like U S yeah. juice. It felt like from the, since the opening match. So it was what what our team did was awesome. And I you know, I back Lakava. I mean, he he just lost his awareness of where he was and he apologized and whatever. It was really cool. But it was the worst thing, I think, for Team USA that the incident happened because apparently it put a huge fuel under them going into Sunday. And granted, we did have a lot of moments, like we played really good on Sunday, but I think there was just an extra like I think we had all the momentum going into Sunday and with that putt and everything. And I think that kind of scuffle, I, I heard Rory kind of got, a fired got up. really fired up and was, you know. It rallied the troops. Yeah, like, and, for and sure. I think Not it, that you need it going into the final round no, singles but of I, a yeah, Ryder but it's, Cup, but it's a little something extra like. Mm -mm. I know, and I wish that part didn't happen because I really think, I, I bet you we still win. The Ryder Cup, because I just think they had this little extra thing. Was like, yeah, you're quite a ways back, but it was doable. But I got to ask when the when the singles came out, and you're the anchor match. And I would, with that deficit, it's like okay. I was actually mad. You were mad that you were an anchor. I, I was pissed. Yeah, interesting. Okay, I thought I didn't know if you might take it as an honor. Like, listen, we're what were you five points back? Like, yeah. we got to make a crazy run, and if it, if we do make a run, it's probably yeah, a good chance my match. It's going to come down to my match. Yeah, and I, yeah, but I was just. I was mad because I unf I just had a feeling my match wasn't going to matter. Gotcha. And that's where I was like, this just sucks because I'm going to play my first Ryder Cup and then my singles match doesn't doesn't matter. So I was kind of mad. I mean, yes, if it did start to matter, it was going to be awesome because then I could be the hero. And that would have been the, you know, geez, talk about ending a year you know that would have yeah, been unbelievable then <laughs> yeah i mean you and for a minute it looked like it might after, that. after max make that putt yeah after that crazy 18th it's like dude this could come we down were to waiting it. on one of the tee boxes and i when i this is when i knew it was over is when scotty have that match with john mm -hmm. i was like god that had to have it that yeah i had to have it and yeah but i was actually mad yeah because i yeah i just wanted to be Anywhere from one to eight, just because I knew at least my point would matter. Um, you know, it's no excuse. I lost the match, but it was weird because I just gained the momentum, got it back to even or maybe one up or whatever it was going into 15. And then what, we're on 15 green and they win it. And then everyone's celebrating, everyone's walking around. And then it's like, well, well why do and we then, even have to keep going? I know. Yeah, and they, why do you have to keep going? And I get it for your record, but I'm like, this is just lame it's a, it was honestly i felt so flat and i was like i don't even want to be out here anymore i feel like there should be an asterisk on some of those matches that end after the cups decided because yeah. like dudes don't there care. you know what i mean there's like, gambling involved as well it, it matters yeah like it it's like it goes on your record yeah. like loss but it's I like dude, the last people a lot three holes on, four on holes the, on those matches or whatever i had you in that match yeah, yeah, by yeah, the I'm way sure. way to go no i'm, I'm sure but still it's like 
I mean, the life's just sucked out of the place. It really, it, it and it was anymore. hard. I mean, on 16, people are literally walking behind. Like, everyone's just moving yeah, they to go care. to 18. They want to go see it. Right? Some yeah. old dude kept jumping in the pond like 12 times. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The hell that guy was Yeah, doing. that pond yeah. area. I was so, out there with like when I was all going down, and I was like, this is just like, why are they even still? Yeah. Like, they should just shake hands and be like, have it. Whatever you yeah. want to do. I don't know. But, like, it shouldn't. I agree. They don't need to play this thing out. Everyone's already popping they champagne. They almost, for the betting, they almost just have to be, everyone just gets a tie or something. Yeah, yeah. And, I don't know. If you're four oh, up you're with like, four to go and it gets in, like, yeah. I beat this guy. You yeah, know what I, I mean? But, like, tough. I don't know. 16, though, is probably one of the coolest holes in Ryder Cup history. Just Hands the down. Setup. There's so it's much. Beautiful. Love that. It really was one of the coolest holes. Because I feel like that's honestly where they're in 18 is where they won the Ryder Cup. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they won almost 16. They chipped in multiple times, made bombs. And then 18, literally every match that was tied or we were one up or one down, they won the hole. I mean, that's. Y'all, really your really match with Patrick's like one of the only wins on 18 yeah. that we had. Literally. It was like all of them. They made a putt every single every time. Every time. I mean, John twice. Mm -hmm. Then Justin Rose against Max and I. I mean, one of the ones crazy. John made was going Mach 12. Oh, yeah. yeah. Crashed in the he, hole. He might have four putted. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> that thing was coming. Yeah. They just... Well, there is that old saying, win or lose, we still booze. Was there a party afterwards, even though? Yeah, there was. You were uh, defeated? Yeah. Oh, big time. I mean. Love that. It's uh. It's a really hard, like not hard. It's a really long, tiring week because we're, you know, it's one thing that I think a lot of us going forward wish that maybe we focused a little bit more on the golf and set us up for more success because we were out multiple times. Not like we were trying to party or anything, but we had all these functions and we're out till 10, 10, 30, 11. And then we had to wake up at 4.30, 4.45 to get to these 7 a.m. tea times and we had to, you know, it's 45 minutes away. So... Um, so it was very tiring, but when we all got to it, we all drank, we all had a lot of fun in our team room, and then we went and celebrated with um, Europe in their oh, room, cool. which was really neat. Um, and that was, I mean, their their party was really fun. So I got the chance to go to the after party at the President's Cup when Team USA won, and we went over to the international one, and they were definitely having more fun. Yeah, it's, they know how to go. It's so funny, like I. We just, we really don't know how to party here. Because Europe. Another if, thing we could help out with. Yeah. If Europe yeah, like that's lost, an I still that think we lose that. you would end up at Team oh. Europe because the music's better, the setup's better, and they just are just something about, they're just way more, it's more fun. I don't know. Shane Lowry needs to let loose a little bit. Oh, yeah. I saw some pictures of Tyrrell <laughs> late. I guess he was the last one standing, like standing, you know, loosely. I guess he was one of that, which oh, I would kind yeah. of expect. He goes. But that's one of the cool things about like at least you go over there like dude, at the end of the day, you try your ass off. You want to win that thing more than anything. Does it hype you up for like potential get one at home? I mean, Beth Page, we've been talking about it, like dude, this thing could get super wild. Yeah. Up there. It could be. Yeah, it could be really wild. I well, mean, hopefully yeah. the fans are really good. It's just I mean, you don't want anyone to like belittle someone's family and say no, that's bad That's the things. one thing I'll say about them like, listen, they they chirp, they root for their squad, but they are respectful. 100%. I mean, you. I never once felt like, oh, this is over the top. Now, it was funny. Like, they'd say stuff to me oh, they're or they're bashing me, but it was never, you know, saying something that's personal that's yeah. really mean. Like and your that's, family or yeah, just yeah. the, like, blatant. So, name. hopefully, I mean, <laughs> I don't think the New Yorkers are going to be like that. It could be interesting, I think. Yeah, coming but, up in L, too. That I mean, you mentioned hungry. you checked off a lot of your career goals in one year. I mean, you get your first PJ Tour win, your first major, play on your first Ryder Cup team. How do you follow it up in 2024? Well, I checked off one last week playing in Maui. Um, I've always wanted to be there. Um, obviously, didn't play great, but... You didn't shoot 42 under like everybody else? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Good God. Yeah. I and mean... Sungjae made 34 birdies. What's the matter with you? Yeah. I I did not. <laughs> I yeah. was playing a normal tour event. I yeah. was shooting two, three under each round, grinding them out. Yeah, grinding them out. <laughs> a lot of pars. Yeah. I was training like the US Open. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I haven't played a Masters, so that's going to yeah. be another something to check off. Obviously, now I, I want to, you know, keep winning. I I want to eventually, hopefully, be one of the legends of golf and be a Hall of Famer, and um, hopefully add to my PJ Tour wins, add to my major wins. Um, but you know, I'm I feel like I have ten more really good years, if not more, if I stay healthy. And so I'm hoping this is just a start of a lot of great golf and a lot of you know, people seeing and watch me play. So this year, I mean, it just would be great to follow up a good year with another good year. And yeah. I think, I think it can, I, you know, I'm 10th in the world right now. I'd love to get lower and lower. 
Keep climbing. Yeah. Does the motto stay the same for this year? Last year was like play cocky, right? That was kind of like your thing you go to. Does that change? You're in, is there a new thing that you're going with this year? Or does that kind of remain? Well, it, it has, worked. It worked pretty damn good. I'll let you know after, uh, on Tuesday of Palm Springs because that's it's kind of cool. Last year when I started working with Julie, um, we met a couple months prior to Palm Springs, but our first tournament we worked together. We had the whole team there, my caddy, everyone. We sat down and we talked about everything. And she kept saying, she goes, I hope, she goes, just trust me one year from now when we're back here in La Quinta, La Quinta Country Club is where we did it. We sat and we'll probably go sit in the same spot. We sat in this spot. She goes, let's have a big picture. And she kept saying that. From next year when we sit in La Quinta, let's say, what do we want to say? And we we had these things. And so it's going to be really neat to go back there. And then that's where we're going to come up with our, our new thing. So I know people would say do it before Maui, but we kind of want to make it yeah that place every year that'll be cool i mean you'll be able to check off so much shit yeah Yeah, yeah. when it's breezy what do you do swing like sleazy there you go don't mumble we say it all the time we say it all you gotta ask your boy though so we did media day out for phoenix open today got out to 16 there were some thunderbirds around decent size people music going ask your boy how it went today Oh, adrenaline you... got me dog <laughs> Long. Air, man. I went sick in that bitch dude i couldn't feel i thought it was in it was in the whole time till we oh got up there and gosh. i hit one Beer. you know the juice is going three feet to it there's a reason he brought that shot oh, by yeah. the way yeah. <laughs> it wasn't to talk about oh, mine it's just oh, so you could say that was close. no self-suck i was just letting that no that I mean, was uh, he had his first chance that was just a little roundabout way to get to i mean <laughs> he had his first chance with all the stands you know he chirps. Oh, oh, God. God. It's too uh, short of a hole, dude. You got to see me. You crumbled back. under the pressure. Send me you back to the big boy tees. We're up here playing off the the whites. You know what I mean? I'm more Maybe of a, it was the museum guy. from one six. Well, museum gets right. even a peek at that hole. Yeah. You know what he's doing, by the way. I mean, yeah, you got one now. You got the baby museum. <laughs> I do have the. What do we call it? The Smithsonian or whatever we call it. Yeah, it's like the exhibit. The exhibit. Yeah, yeah it's not quite the museum. We normally do like E9, but we've done E9 oh. with you a bunch of times. So we just have a couple little bullshitters. We're bringing back a little segment we did on a radio called Asking for a Friend, where these questions aren't from us, but we reach out to some of your friends. We have people zero you, to do with it. People you know. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, I'm sure you have zero to do with we it. We ask those questions. So we got a couple of those, and I got a couple of random bullshitters, yeah. and we'll just do it like that. You have a co- I've got two. I can, yeah, I got two will be fine. Boy. Oh, I have one, a bonus one. You know, I might because, have a bonus. You're Sle- starting with the bonus already? Well, no, just because I just remember I wrote this down during the, because Sleeves was nice enough. Your your father over here was mm-hmm. nice enough to throw you a little <laughs> celebratory party at Isabella's. Oh, yeah, okay. oh, yeah. We need to talk about that, Have too. you ever asked Sleeves what the bill was that night? <laughs> well, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can tell you that. I'll, I'll take that when the answer is, <laughs> fuck no. <laughs> <laughs> well, the last thing on his mind, he just made four stacks well, in his pocket. Well, here's the thing. Is, I, I like, still feel bad about it, but you guys are like, oh, we got it, we got it. and I We won- did got it until it came, and I was like, this is triple. What? Like, how much are pizzas in this? Well, yeah, you this? would think it'd be like Are these three straight grand. from New York? Yeah, we're like, dude, it'll be four, five, you know, it'll be fine or whatever. And they came back, I was like, and they, by the way, they put the amount of like pizzas we had. I was like, who's eating it? There was only 40 people there. We ordered 72 pizzas. I was like, who, who snuck I in? Might have, I might have called in and sent some down the road to some friends. <laughs> yeah, somebody did. <laughs> they probably did. I mean, Fat Perez is there. He only drank. He didn't, yeah, it wasn't he didn't him. Eat. I was like, who's eating this? Dog? Oh, my oh, gosh. Beautiful. Oh, man. I know. I, I, I still feel bad. You owe me, you owe me, you owe me a substantial amount. We'll get to that a little you later. I'm taking it out of your will. About the same we'll play as- pickle for it. Oh, for two trillion. Oh, by the way, he's saying now he talks shit about everything. By the way, but now he's texting me the other day. He's like, "I pickle anytime Did you, you want." Did you tell and him? I asked him. I was like, "Bet, name it anywhere for whatever amount. Play for your earnings this year. There's just no chance." And I was like, "Who's your partner?" And he goes, "Ben Johns." This is the, the number, number one player. player in the world. I, 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 I know like, that. I, I, like, I looked it up. I, I, yeah, I was you know, about I was to like, say, he's like, why? He's my friend. Why couldn't I play with him? I was like, I don't give a shit. <laughs> he's um, not my friend. I don't. By the way, we can fit it to you every time. It'd be fine. But now, Scheffler took. Now he's coming with Scotty. He wants to go to Scotty's Scotty. Good. If we yeah. do that, that would be made for TV. Scotty right won that pickleball in Dallas yet. going up against I saw him. I said, I was, I said that's probably the best amateur I know is Scotty. He looked uh, he looked good in that thing. Like he was, yeah. I was impressed. He loves it. For a guy that I don't know how much he plays, it's a little more of a risk of him hurting an ankle than it is for the rest of us. But um, yeah. you talk to Scotty, set that up. We be, we'll, By the way, he would love to do it. He, we'll make it happen. He asks any time we're somewhere, he's like, hey, you want to play pickle? You want, he's really? asking everybody. He's like that? He literally every week plays pickle or now he's into paddle. But oh my, he loves all of them. There's a tournament coming here pretty soon. Yeah. He'll be here. Is it, oh, He's yeah, only he won, won it twice, yeah. so but he might have a few obligations. I can't but. wait to be sitting at home. It goes across the bottom. Wyndham Clark and Scotty Scheffler are the WM Phoenix Could Open because they rolled their ankle playing pickleball. Could you imagine? But we're playing for $3 trillion, so. yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. never mind. Right. Yeah. It's for a trillion. <laughs> all right, you want to start with asking for a frame? Would you like me to? Yeah, I'll start it off here because um, we talked about your, your 
three wood in on 14. And I've been told that this question potentially helped lead you to ultimately winning that U.S. Open. But the question is, if a baseball team is 86 and 84, how many games over 500 are they? Oh, now, now that you bring this up, <laughs> yeah. are you not going to say who the question's from? Oh, no. well, he knows. I can guarantee. Well, they don't. Oh, it's from it's from a, Dick Fowler. Uh, it's actually no, it's not from R- Romano. It's not from Richard Romano. It's actually from Jelly. Oh, from Jelly. It's from John Ellis so, Caddy. Dur- but by so, the way, we were having this argument all day, Ricky, yeah. Ricky, Ricky, and John and I, and they thought I'm like it's relative to what 500 is, and they were like, no, it's relative. So if you win 100 games and you go 100 and you know 62. They're like, oh, you're up. They're saying they were saying you're up thirty. You're thirty games, thirty eight games, games above five hundred. I go, no, it's relative to what five hundred is, which is eighty one and eighty one, and so that's what I believe. So and you guys argue about it the whole time. The, the whole answer time. is you're two games over five hundred if you're eighty six and eighty four. Hundred percent. Right. Okay. I was gonna say if they're saying you're not, like if you're eight and seven in football, oh, by the what way, are you half a game of, above five hundred? All three of them said that it's the other way. They're like, no, you're thirty eight games above, and I go. No, it has to be this. And so we were arguing, literally walking the whole, up 14 fairways. Yeah. We were laughing about this because we're in like full argument mode. Yeah, Ellis was like, dude, we're sitting here on 14, like with ultimately <laughs> what goes down is like the biggest shot of his career. And we're waiting and it's like, we're leading the, and all we're talking about is how many games and like, <laughs> he's like Fowler's in on it. Romano's in on it. He's like, finally, we're like, dude, it's our turn to so hit. So I, like, oh, yeah. I went to Mark Mulder. I went to Loesch. I went to <laughs> baseball guys because it was a, initially yeah. a baseball question. And they were like, no, you're... You know, two games. You know, yeah. two games two, above five hundred. Yeah. So, all right, case closed. But yeah. luckily, you guys didn't know, or at least you're arguing, and now you're U.S. Open. Yeah, champ. yeah, hundred percent. Nice, tricky question. That is the the only reason I won. Was that? Yeah, argument. that's it. Yeah. The only reason. Was, <laughs> yeah. All right, like, I'm gonna give you a choice. You can choose a question from your Ryder Cup teammate Max Homa, or your Oklahoma State Cowboy teammate Hayden Wood. Well, <laughs> good options. Yeah, well, both very good options. Hayden's is gonna be more. Get me more and be smarter. You gonna be a smarter question to do Aiden. Max or do no no, no Max Aiden. will probably be not as bad. How about can I do both? Well, you're gonna we get both. I'm just asking which one you want to have first. Oh, uh, let's let's start easy. Let's start with Max. Okay, from Max Homa. What's harder to charade, Horbag or Dirty Sanchez? <laughs> <laughs> That's a great. If you question. could act it out, yeah, actually, it would help. We need to you to act it out. We have YouTube out. here. I think the people would like to see it. <laughs> oh one. my god. <laughs> So we were at the Bahamas this year. I don't know if you told you the story. Oh, yeah. oh my God, it was so amazing. So we're at the Bahamas and we're playing. There's like eight of ten of us, and we <laughs> Alicia puts Horbag on one of the things, and John had to act it out. And John's doing all these things trying to be a Horbag. <laughs> what and, kind of things? What kind of things? I can't. I can't Just like some big quick visuals. If you don't no, mind. I can't do it. But there was a lot of things going on, and then finally he was just trying to basically do anything with the. Everywhere, Where dicks everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> John, he did it. He did it. I knew he couldn't stop himself. He did it. <laughs> John started doing all these things, and Max and I, we, we knew what it was, but we just loved watching him perform this. We're like, no, dude, keep going, keep John going. John was basically trying to shove a dick anywhere. <laughs> and he <was> dick <laughs> we, were, we were laughing so hard, and the time runs out, and he's like, you guys didn't know? And we're like... We knew what it was. Yeah, we knew just it was 13 minutes it. ago. Yeah. This is it so was, great. It was so amazing. Uh, oh, my God. John great question, was, Max. Uh, so Hor- Horbag. Horbag is definitely. Anywhere. That might be uh, the, that's uh, the uh, quote. It's like our <laughs> Twitter and stuff episode. That's my favorite quote in the history of the show. <laughs> oh, my so great. John. He's God. Like, oh, God. God. By the way, if we had a video, this thing would have gone viral. I mean, yeah. it was. <laughs> I said, should I get him to reenact? He goes. If you do, this will be amazing. I was trying to get it, and then he was he <laughs> no, just because casually I'd be, put the arms up. We know I, what you're doing. We know what you're doing, you uh, sicko. God. Then I'd become a, a meme if I did it. Uh, just we're going to clip that. Trust me. I don't know <laughs> what's going viral, but I'm going to have it for forever. All right. Next one. This is from Hayden Wood. In reminder to everyone listening to all this was many, many moons ago. Long time ago. But have you ever sent the exact same bouquet of flowers to two different girls in one Valentine's Day? I mean, he, obviously the answer is yes. <laughs> <laughs> Could have just said no at the end of the whole thing. No, you I don't even know what you're maybe about. two different sets of bouquets. Like. Okay, here's how the story goes. I was a freshman. I didn't realize, I didn't know the power of social media. I didn't know that the girls were in the same sorority. Didn't know that. And I also didn't say <laughs> sorority. I also didn't know that girls all talk. And so I was talking to this one girl. This is going to make you sound terrible. But I was talking to this one girl, and we were kind of dating. But the girl I really, really liked was a girl I went 
like she we kind of started flirting we went on a date went on another date and then valentine's comes up i'm like man i've been kind of hanging out with this girl but this girl's kind of giving me saw so i send them both the exact same thing they both put it on social media like oh this is so sweet whatever and then someone goes uh those are the same thing and then they both find out they both text me say hey we know what you did and i lost both of them <laughs> <laughs> and i lost both of them <laughs> Just went and to, I learned my lesson. I, I could understand. I don't know they're in the same sorority, but the I don't know the girls talk. Like, well, here's the thing. What do you think they're doing? Soccer team, and like I knew the one girl was in a sorority. I didn't know the other one was in this like in a sorority. Yeah. So I was like, sorority girl and a sports girl. They probably don't mingle, you know. And yeah. well, sure I enough, can't imagine them sitting on the couch this summer watching the USL and be like, "You're not gonna believe what that guy <laughs> yeah. did." Yeah. Oh, yeah. Hey. The apple doesn't fall yeah. far from the tree. Bud. I didn't know that that was her big and her little. You know, I mean, <laughs> they're in the same room. Oh my god! <laughs> Delivered at the same time. Oh, that's great. Same uh, pole. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is better you than emergency night. Yeah, yeah. 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 we're to do this for more. Oh man, I've done some dumb things. Jeez, Louise. No, See, dude, thirty. You, thirty. I don't do that. Yeah, now, now I don't do that. That was, was, that was my twenties. You tighten it up. Twenties. Tighten it up. We love you, Dub. We're so happy for you, man. What a year! Keep this thing rolling. How about a better twenty twenty four? That's that's the plan. All right, man. Well, thank you so much. Always fun sitting down with you. Yeah. All right. That was the 2023 U.S. Open champ, Wyndham Clark, joining us on Subpar. Boy, that was a lot of fun. He's the special. End, charades. He's special, isn't he? John Ellis, you beautiful man, you. I was just seeing I was like, what were they doing? What kind of signs? What are you talking about? I knew he would do it. He walked right in. He can't into control it. himself. He doesn't get it. Apple doesn't fall far from the tree. Uh, the, the end was my favorite, though. With all those questions, there was one we had to take out. Yeah. We don't even want to tease you about it because it was so good, but we talked to some people. It was best to leave it out, but this is your son. <laughs> you raised him. I yeah, know. I've done a shit your, job. Your man is sending roses to two different girls on Valentine's Day in the same sorority? What What did you teach him growing up? It's a numbers game. It's a volume <laughs> game in that world. In the same sorority house, you, look, he's not a brains guy. He can, he can reach 190 ball speed. He's a talent. He's not a brains. He's never really had to think much for himself. But, dude, I love the kid. That's my, that's my brother. Do you talk about how quickly a life has changed? I mean, from going a year ago, rewind one year, you know, his life looked a lot different than it does now. And now the success that he's had playing on the Ryder Cup major champions you know um he's had some decisions to make that wouldn't have been there a year ago you know without his year and it's just I've said for a long time um his talent is like an elite talent he can do things that just no matter what you do no matter how hard you practice other people can't do it and the fact that he kind of got his brain on the same page with his talent this year um I don't think he's done man I don't think he's done. I think the consistency can improve a little bit, but the the good that he has, when it's good, it's going to be really damn good. And the bigger the yard, the tougher the course, I think the better for him. Yeah, I think Julie Elion, his sports psych, the lit, deserves like maybe one of the handles off the U.S. Open trophy. A, because she, maybe she, more. She has changed his life, and he is, obviously, like you said, world-class talent. Awesome to see all the success he's had. And I love hearing about him and Cantley being partners at the Ryder Cup I knew like some games would go on occasionally here and there and like PGA tour events, practice rounds, especially during the freaking Ryder cup, playing a birdies game with your partner. Love that. Me too. And he comes to him and he's like, Hey, just so you know, like the, he's like, I got it. I know the game. Yeah. I know and how this he hits works. It to six feet. I on went the to first. UCLA. And also like getting a guy inside the Ryder cup room, like dude, the team, we weren't divided. There was no divisiveness. Like it's just all that noise that comes around, which I thought there was more at this Ryder cup than even is typical. But, um, it's cool to get all his personal insights. Couldn't could not be happier for a dude. Uh, that putter changed his game. Although we uh, were out at the rock the other day, he this is no bullshit. Six putters in the bag the other day uh, out there. So going through a little change of route. Maybe right he'll now. send them all roses. Yeah, <laughs> never would be the worst move. <laughs> all right. Well, congratulations, Wyndham, on such a great 2023. Can't wait to see what you do in 2024. But the 2024 Super Bowl is set. The Chiefs playing the Niners. Once again, Patrick Mahomes does it. I believe I took the Chiefs you did. and the Lions. I took Ravens-Lions. We got a little, mm. not I wouldn't call it, it greasy because we had a 17-point point lead at half, but mm. there's also a situation mm. there where we didn't cover. Yeah, Dan Campbell, I love tough. you. Kick the damn field goal. Or just get a new kicker if yeah, you don't trust one him. One or the other. But, um, man, awesome games. Can't wait for the Super Bowl. Patrick Mahomes, I mean, nobody gave him a chance. They're Season was going to shit, and what's he do? Goes on the road, beats Buffalo, beats Baltimore, and now the lines moved a little bit. It opened at San Fran minus two and a half. It's down to minus one. San Fran favored by a point over KC, so basically a pick'em. 
I told you during radio today, I took KC on Sunday because I saw a little stat where I believe he was 9-1-1 one, and one as an underdog against the spread, 8-3 and three outright. So I was like, mm, seems like a pretty good record. Let's go with it. So here we go. He's only getting a point. But do you bet against Patrick Mahomes? I've done it the last two weeks, and I think I'm about done doing it. Like I'm like, they're the defending Super Bowl champs. they got the best player in football. They're going on the road and beating what you would call probably the two hottest teams in football at their place. Like, At what point do I learn? I don't know. I'm shit on NFL. I cannot get anything. Right now, we got a whole, we got two weeks to figure this yeah, so out. You got time. I'm a lean KC right now. And just the way, like, look what the Lions did to San Fran in the first half. I'm like, I mean, dude, they kind of were putting it on the Ravens. Beat them up pretty good towards the end of the season. I don't know that they're invincible and just everything just seems to be lining up. We got the Taylor Swift story and Kelsey and everything's just working out for KC right now. So I'm a KC lean at All right, this well, point. We got time. We'll figure but it I out. But I stink at betting. So yeah, there's we'll, that. We'll, we'll figure it out. Make your decision about Saturday afternoon of Phoenix Open about 4 p.m. That's when your brain will be at its peak. That's when and it I think fires. You, I think you know that's, that's when it's That's when I'll really be humming. All right. Well, this week on the PGA Tour, the AT&T Pebble Beach Pro-Am signature event, so much different this year. 80-man field, 80 celebs slash amateurs teeing it up just for two days, though. Pebble, Spyglass, and then just pros only Saturday and Sunday. No cut. 80 guys. Let's make some picks. The weather looks terrible, as usual, out of Pebble this time of year. I'm going to be there doing the coverage Saturday, Sunday for CBS. I'm dreading having to wear all this rain gear. I freaking hate it. But let's get to some picks here. I'm going with the guy. Tighten the boots. There's there's a couple of golf courses where I just don't care what kind of form this guy's in. When he gets there, I feel like he plays well. He loves it. His partner, Jake Owen, they have a great time out there. He's a past champion of the event. I think his golf game looks really good. He played well down in Hawaii at the Century. I think he finished third, possibly, but hasn't played since then. But I expect a very good year from Jordan Spieth, who's going off at 18-1. to 1. Safe play. Good play. Uh, the man loves Pebble Beach. Uh, yeah, I don't like you're kind of right. Just throw it away. And he gets one more round at Pebble than he typically has. By the way, can we year. give a shout out to whoever that guy on Twitter was that said, do we tell people we pick or do guys try to come to us and tell us not to pick them because of what we do? I was here? one we, shot away from dude, my long shot last week. I thought that was pretty good. By a shot this year and Jason Day, one bad week. Give us a break, guy. Two top tens on my guys last week. I, we whiff on a lot of stuff, but we own yeah. up to the whiffs. Um, oh, we've been worse. I'll tell you that. Way we've been worse. way worse. Um, all right. Going to my favorite. Kind of similar to a lot of things you said. The dude loves this place. Uh, he won the US Am there. He then was the low amateur at the US Open there. He played last season or last year out here, uh, finished 13th, and now he gets an extra round at Pebble Beach. Also well rested, hasn't played since the century. Give me Victor Hovland. 12 to 1. New swing coach. 12 to 1. Which is very interesting. Apparently he didn't play well enough last year. Not hitting it good enough. Not driving it. Heard he's working with Grant Waite now on his swing, which Grant Waite, great teacher. Um, very good golf swing, but excited to see what Victor does. He is actually, I got a little bet with our friend Ben Marsh. He is so confident in Max Homa this week. He took Ma- Max and let me pick two guys. And one of my guys was Victor Hoffman. Two against one winner. Yeah. Got to win. Got to win. Got to win for it to cash. Yeah. Okay. All right. Smart play. My dark horse. And this is slightly under a dark horse number, but I'm going to allow it. Okay. Okay. His caddy told me the other day, last 12 events, he has eight top 11s. Going back to 2023. So the man is playing some golf. He seems to be a factor a lot. His name keeps popping up on that leaderboard. I would love a top 10 play out of this. JT Poston. James Tyree with Aaron Fleener on the bag. Come on down. 45 to 1. God bless him. When Fleener speaks, by God, you pay attention. Uh, shout out JT. Had him in a little matchup out at the Amex, too. Kid did me right. Um, love that. Playing very, very solid golf to start the year. Puts the shit out of it and hits it straight. So pretty good formula there. For my long shot, there's not a lot of form <laughs> okay, to be making this good. pick, but I just feel like it's coming. Hasn't had his best stuff yet. Two starts this year, 45th at the century. Not great. Missed cut at the Amex. Well, they did shoot. It wasn't terrible. We shot 11 under just to cut some million under around that place. But great iron player. Good putter. Feels like the type of golf course he could do well on. I'll take Tom Kim 55 to 1. Mm. What do you think about that? Not a lot of form, but sometimes, dude, I go on form all the time and then guys stink. So it's like, you know, what's the right recipe? I don't know. It's early. It's four events on the PGA Tour. What, he's yeah, played dude. two it's, or three of them? Drives it straight, irons it great. All right. And 
Don't forget, go to fairwayjockey.com. Go to that little search bar. Type in Birdie Juice. All kinds of stuff on there. Even some special WM Phoenix Open shirts that we have that go along with the theme of the week. Yeah, I think they'll be able to figure it out when they see it. Also, go to our Instagram at Golf Subpar. Uh, tag a friend. We're doing a giveaway there. So if you haven't entered that yet, we'll be giving away some gear as well in honor of what is the greatest week on the PGA Tour. You better hydrate, and most dangerous. Big week coming yeah, up. That is large. I'm, I have anxiety already. All right, everybody enjoy the AT&T Pebble Beach Pro-Am, and we'll talk to you on the next subpar. <laughs>